Hey guys, I'm back. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, today I decided to make it so that my webcam works when recording. I think there is a slight delay between what I speak and the, what the webcam shows, but as far as I can tell, it's it seems to be working fine. So I'll leave my f my beautiful face there on the right for you to accompany me uh, in this journey we're going to do today, I guess. And what a journey it is. I'm going to talk about LaTeX really quickly. Later, I will talk about how not to how to not use LaTeX because uh, if you have used it for any length of time, you know that it can be uh, quite a pain to uh, to use it in tr in practical uh, terms. Maybe if you use Overleaf, it, it's a bit it's a bit simpler. Also, I know there are people who write macros, but I tend to find them kind of hacky. Uh, and there are better ways, I think, to get around LaTeX syntax. One of the ways in which people tend to do that is they write uh, source source uh, source LaTeX in uh, in uh, what is it called in Markdown, and then they convert it to LaTeX using, say, Pandoc, for example. I used to do that. I actually did that for uh, for about some what six months a year before I got into Emacs, and then Emacs just simplifies your life a lot. Um, because it gives you org mode, obviously, and org mode, you can use. Uh, you have this very nice utility that's called org export. That's allow that allows you to uh, take a org source file and then convert it to anything. You can convert it to HTML. You can convert it to a, P a PDF using LaTeX. You can convert it to a document, for example, uh, an Office document file, etc., etc. So uh, I think that uh, one of the big selling points of Emacs is org mode, and I'm going to show you guys how can you how you can simplify writing reports and all this kind of stuff using org mode and org export. So to show that, I I'm going to show you this little report that I started writing today, and one of the reasons uh, I'm using this one specifically is because uh, it contains a lot of it shows and it contains a lot of the good examples, like uh, uh, a lot of interesting examples at the very least, uh, on, on the power of this tool, I guess you can say that. So, I, I was. Uh, it's just a school report again. I've read it, notice I've written it in French. It's not really important. The grammar is certainly wrong because I'm writing it on an English uh, keyboard, so I don't have the accents. But what I usually do is I edit it later, I add the accents and I also correct the grammar. But what's important here, uh, it's a it's a regular document, I have source code blocks, notice I have this uh, source code block, notice I have some images, etc, etc. I even have a table, and I'm going to show you guys how this looks like in terms of work mode. So, starting out with the basics, uh, I'm going to make some space here. Here on the left, we have uh, the Emacs buffer, it's an org mode file. And this is the source code for this document on the right. So generally in LaTeX what you would do if you want to make a session, for example, a, a section header, what you would do is you would uh, probably do either a begin se section or you would use this section and then specify stuff, tp1, whatever, etc. But uh, what you can do in org mode is instead of writing headers and sections dividers using um, using the functions, you can write it uh, simply by using a star. So a single star is going to represent, say, a H1 header, for example, if you're thinking HTML, and then a, an H2 header if, uh, is going to be two stars. So subsection sub section 1 and then subsection 2 for example and I'm going to spread them all over the text just like that and what's very convenient about work mode is that you can wrap stuff inside sections so notice I, I spread this uh, these two subsections and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press tab on top of subsection 2 and this is going to wrap everything inside subsection 2 and now only subsection 1 is viewable I can toggle this by just by pressing tab so if I press it again it's going to appear once more this is uh, this is interesting just uh, 
okay I'm going to put this as it was before and then we'll continue so text you're going to write it everything in plain text and uh, in LaTeX you also write mostly everything in plain text when it's about a paragraph the contents of a paragraph but uh, you also have to use functions when you want for example bold uh, bold text or if you want italic text so in LaTeX what you would write is emph for emphasis or I think a text bold face text bf and if you want italic then it's text it so these are functions that you have to write and if your text is already written you have to obviously wrap this function around your text it takes, a, it takes some time a simpler alternative in org mode is instead of doing that if I want to say put a bold face around uh, this first phrase uh, up until there I can wrap it inside stars if it's on the body of the text you wrap stuff inside stars and you're going to appear bold you, we're going to notice that if I do an export by the way uh, by the way in order to export if you have a, a, an org buffer open you're going to do control C control E this is going to open you this little prompt and then I want to export to a LaTeX so I'm going to press lowercase L and you have four options I'm going to export it to a PDF file I already have my PDF reader uh, read, uh, open on the right I'm going to press lowercase p it's going to ask me if I want uh, to um, to update it I say yes and now notice that the text now it appears as bold on my uh, so this is how you do bold and if I want to take the same uh, the same text and put it in italic it's the same thing I, I wrap it inside the forward slashes I'm going to do that again recompile the document and I'll notice that it's italic so this uh, this is useful but then what you have also noticed by now if you've been paying attention sorry is that I have a, a couple of images inside the buffer so Emacs if you're using the graphics version you can actually see images inside your buffer which is helpful I think it helps you identify where, where, where stuff is and, uh, in or, and just to show you essentially um, this is a link so you can write you can declare links to files in your file system on Emacs using this using the two square brackets uh, closing in the, the link and then I can give it a, a, a pet file and this is what appears so if the link is an image Emacs is going to open that image and it's going to show you uh, I can toggle this behavior by using org mode no org export so it's toggle org what's it oh there you go it's org toggle in my images there, there's also this one um, this little keyboard shortcut I'm not going to go into that but you can call org toggle inline images and then it's going to I'm going to toggle it to be on so org toggle inline images and now everything that links to an image is going to show up as an image so I can set the captions so notice that this caption here is what appears here I don't have to write the begin uh, be begin figure etc include the, the the functions for the caption for the label I just I just declare that as a parameter on my source file I find this much quicker so I can declare a, a file I can declare a labels the only thing that you can do simply is references so but also you can uh, you can easily input uh, LaTeX code inside an org file so if I wanted I could for example put in our a site a site command and it, and I'm going to cite for example fig tp files list so you can you can mix and match if you want you can put latex syntax inside of your document and it's going to read it just fine so this site is making a reference to this label 
So given the document as this, it's going to print this site is going to become figure one because uh, again the figure I'm citing is figure one on the document. So it's good to know that you can also input your regular uh, your regular LaTeX commands in case you need them. So in order to put a little text block, a little source code block, you can use the begin source statements. And there is a there is a macro that simplifies that. Uh, in in org mode, you can uh, press this symbol, the less than symbol. You put it a uh, lowercase s, and then you hit tab. It's going to begin uh, to write you for you this begin source and the end source blocks, and then you just put it, your text in the middle. So this simplifies, and, and you can also specify which language. In this case, it's Bash. You can also write Python, etc., C. Uh, then this is just text again. This is just to show you guys what it looks like And then to the most interesting of them I think uh, I really like this feature of work mode because it just looks very cool and it's the table So in order to make a table in org mode, you can see that this one is done, but uh, it's very simple You just need to use the pipe symbol and then you can for example give the name a uh, parameter and then you enclose it in pipes and then you give it another another one result for example and if i press tab it's going to automatically size uh, auto auto size my my table and it's also going to pass me over to the next line so it's going to make that a uh, little uh, you see that it inserted those pipe characters there and now i can give it for example parameter a result is I don't know 22 parameter B result is I don't know 23 parameter C blah 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 and it's auto sizing my table and in case you haven't noticed I'll make a parameter D and I'll put a big a really big number it auto sizes everything so if I reduce it is going to reduce uh, automatically and uh, this table becomes a real LaTeX table so you can see that here it's actually printed as a regular LaTeX table I, I managed to put a caption here on top and uh, the, the captions here again everything is working you can also obviously change the, uh, the behavior of this if you change the header file for your LaTeX so there's no big mystery there mm. and if you want to make these line breaks just so that you know you go you go to an empty file on your table you press the dash symbol and then you tap it and it's going to fill in the table for you and what else can i talk about so yeah we've seen tables we've seen images which are just links uh, to images and uh, they can appear on your buffer uh, now let's just talk a little bit about the header files and how you declare your packages and then I think you should have you should know enough in order to set up something like this on your own uh, and we'll look at uh, with regards to headers the most important uh, statements are these ones actually these ones really because uh, these statements here they are common to our org, uh, org files and the startup show everything this essentially is such that by default I think that uh, uh, the org files they start with all the sections collapsed but uh, if you do a show everything it's going to expand all the sections so it's as if you were doing tab there inline images this is just so that it prints images by default uh, there it's there it's not necessarily a default behavior so if you input links to an image it's not uh, necessarily going to appear as an image you need to specify this parameter here title and other they are obviously the title and other of your LaTeX document but uh, if you were exporting to an HTML file for example they could also be on the metadata that's going to be generated on the uh, during the export finally these are the ones that are important for the LaTeX so LaTeX class uh, LaTeX class is uh, the article again it can be any of the default types so it can be a class article class book class report Beamer, etc. And then class options, I give it the A4 paper. You can also give it, for example, sorry, 
other parameters such whether or not you want it to be on in base in how do you say it even with the uh, with the f instead of the uh, instead of it being like this you can make it like this I, I forgot how to say that but uh, you can s uh, make it so that it's I guess on its side maybe uh, you just need to know the it's the LaTeX uh, LaTeX syntax that goes on top of your document when you declare the class and then you specify a, a compiler most people are going to be just fine with PDF LaTeX I wanted to use Lua LaTeX but anything really works whatever it is installed by default if you don't write anything it's going to use PDF LaTeX according to a variable I'm going to put the link to all the documentation for this as well if you guys want to check it later because it's a lot of information and I find that the manual for this is very good so you're going to learn a lot if you want to read through it finally this is what actually declares like uh, the header for our LaTeX so everything that's here you may have noticed already this comes inside uh, those uh, begin documents essentially it comes inside the body of your text and then we need uh, I just wanted to input some parameters that go into the header that go before so you use the LaTeX header statement and here I wanted to make it simple so I just make it so that it inputs another file and this file is the header file that's common to all my reports this way all my reports are going to look the same essentially and if I show you guys that file I think it's somewhere on my open files this is what it looks like so it's going to be your use package statements here you're going to declare all the packages that you use and you're going to for example make the setup so for your links you obviously have to configure I per setup the package this is how I set it to be colored for example and then uh, yeah I'm defining some colors that I'm later going to use on the listings so if I have a language uh, Python for example I have the listing uh, uh, with uh, that nice uh, syntax coloring that I shown you guys and uh, I think that this uh, this mostly summarizes everything so this was just to give to start giving you guys some ideas uh, hopefully you learn something from this hopefully you learn, learn how to use uh, some word mode uh, and it may have gotten you interested so again I'm going to link that uh, documentation down uh, down there I'm soon going to also make some videos on my Emacs setup so my configuration files etc I think it may be useful to some of you and uh, yeah I think that uh, this sums it up essentially uh, hope you guys enjoyed this if you liked it uh, please do like and uh, subscribe to my channel if you're interested if you want content like this if you have any questions just post them on the comments again I'm always there and for those of you who already gave me uh, some kind of suggestion on the comments for my previous videos know that they are coming so I'm going to talk uh, very soon about security I think regarding void Linux I think that this is a very good question to ask and a very good one to answer as well if you're using it uh, I'm also going to talk about the, some graphical environment setup and yes yeah, since I don't have that many subscribers again each one of your requests counts so if you want you can obviously always ask me uh, if you want any specific topic covered so thank you very much guys see you next time bye bye